So in this tutorial, we've got five more regular expression exercises that you can solve using some JavaScript functions. And we're going to be taking a look at some of the other different JavaScript functions that you can use regular expressions with to solve the following exercises. So this is another good opportunity for you to practice some of your pattern matching skills alongside using some JavaScript functions. So let's get started by looking at the exercises. Okay, so I've set up a gist for these exercises and I'll put a link to this in the description below. Um, very similar to the previous regular expressions uh, exercises that we did, there's going to be five exercises and there's a string contained within a variable for each one. So the first thing we can actually do is if we go and grab the variables that I've declared here in the gist and if we go to our developer tools and just paste those into the console, you'll see exercise five has a large string there, but let's just uh, ignore it for now. So you might want to pause the video at this point and have a go at the exercises yourselves and come back if you get stuck, or you can just sit back and watch me go through some examples for solving these exercises. So uh, the first one we've got here is exercise one, and let's have a look at the string for exercise one to start off with. Um, basically, it's a bit of a nonsensical string, but uh, it's essentially what might be some uh, grades from some exam results perhaps, and they've all been concatenated or compiled into one particular string. So what we're required to do for exercise one is uh, using some kind of regex is to get an array of the actual grade value. So what we should end up with is an array that basically has grade one, grade two, etc., all the way to grade five. So whilst the data is a bit funny, the actual idea of getting repeated data out of a string and, and getting it in and putting it into some kind of format like an array is something that you probably could apply your regex skills to in a real project. So there are a few different ways that you can do this, and one way you could do it is to use the match function, which we saw in the previous tutorial. And the idea really behind this exercise was to show you that you can actually match literal characters as well with inside a regex. So for example, I can just type in grade inside of our regex, and if I uh, put a global modifier on that, you can see it matches the five instances of the word grade inside of the string. So if we go back to the actual regex itself, and we want to actually match the space and also the numerical character after it. So what we can do is use the special space regex control character, and also we can use the digit regex control character, or we could use the zero to nine character class as well. Of course, if there was anything else separating those grades in the strings, like a comma or a hyphen, then the regex would still work because it would just skip over those parts when it's doing its matching. Another approach that you can do with this exercise is to use the split function. So you've probably seen how the split function works with strings. For example, you can pass it in a white space character and it goes through the string looking for spaces and then splits it up and puts it into an array. But as you can see, it doesn't really give us the exact result that we were after in our example. But you can actually pass a regex into the split function as well. So if we go and grab the regex that we just used with our match function and pass it into split, it doesn't quite work as expected because we need to capture the pattern that we're actually uh, matching inside of our regular expression, uh, putting it into some parentheses that actually puts it into a capture group, and that will allow the split function to actually split the string and save those grades into the array. And we do end up with some empty strings in our array as well, so we'd need to filter those out. But just to show you, you can use a regular expression with the split function, which is handy if you're trying to split a string based on some kind of pattern. So that's a couple of solutions for exercise one. Let's take a look at exercise two. So exercise two is basically asking us to look at the string and using a regex determine whether or not it actually has a substring of the word agenda or age. So we have a look at the string for exercise two and you can see that it does actually indeed have the word agenda in there. So we should be getting a truthy value back. Now you can use the match function and then just use some kind of Boolean logic to actually ensure that you're getting a truthy value back from your matches. But there's another function that you can use within JavaScript to test a regular expression to see whether or not the pattern matches the string that you're trying to perform it on. And that function unsurprisingly is called test. And we need to call the test function on an actual regular expression itself. So you can construct a new object or you can use a regular expression literal as I'm going to do here. So for example, to test for the presence of age inside of the string, we can say the regular expression we're going to use is age. And then inside of the parentheses for the test function, we actually pass in the string that we want to test. And you can see we get a true value back. And if we were to put a value inside of our regular expression that doesn't exist, you can see that value then changes to false. 
So this exercise could actually be solved just by using this simple expression because by default, if you're actually testing for the word age, then it's a bit irrelevant whether a gender actually exists inside of the string anyway because the expression will always return true when it finds the first age inside of the agenda word. But just to show you what can be done with some optional matching, we could put the NDA characters, the rest of the word agenda, inside of a character class and then make that optional by putting a question mark after that character class. And you can see we still get a true value back. Um, but if we were to change the x2 string to something else, like say we could have age, that still returns true. And putting in NDA still returns a true value from the test function. If, however, if you were to change this to a match function, you'd get different results based on whether the source string actually had age or a gender inside it. So this exercise was all focused around introducing you to the test function and just showing you how you can use it if you've got a pattern that you want to match in a string to get a true or false value back straight away. So let's take a look at exercise three. So exercise three is basically asking us to get an array of numbers that are contained within the string that's inside of our x3 variable. So as you can see, the x3 variable is still a string, but it has numbers inside it and they're separated via various symbols. So this is simply a case of matching a variable number of digits and then putting them into an array. So we can use the match function here. And we saw in the previous tutorial that you can use the digits character class and then you can do things like matching a range of numbers, so like between 1 and 3 for example. And that actually gives us the result that we need. However, what if the number of digits inside of each of those numbers becomes larger than 3? So if you had like thousands or millions represented by some of the numbers? Well, you could obviously change the range up to a larger number, but there's a shortcut that you can do that using a quantifier, which is the plus symbol, which basically means match one or more of those digits. So that way we don't need to remember how many digits each number has. We can simply use that regular expression and it'll find any length of number inside of the string. So that's a nice simple solution for exercise three. Let's move on and take a look at exercise four. So exercise four is basically asking us to get the part of the string that's after the semicolon. So without using a regex, you could use an index of or some other string operation to actually split the string based on that. But using a regex is really simple too. But this is just to demonstrate that you can match the literal semicolon character. So if we say x4.match and then inside of our regular expression, we can then use the literal semicolon. And then we're going to match one or more spaces. In the example string, there's only one space, but in reality, there could be multiple spaces before the data that we're trying to extract. And then to match any type of letter, we can use the backslash w for word boundaries. And again, we'll match one or more of those characters until we reach some other kind of character like the end of the string or another space. So that works pretty well, but the only problem is in our output, in our matching group that we've got, the first element that we find, the actual match, has the semicolon and the space inside it. So what about if we just wanted to get the name that's matched here? Well, we can wrap our word boundary matching inside of some parentheses. And now if you examine the object that the match function returns to us, you can see that the item in position one is literally just what we put inside of our parentheses up there, which is matching the name that was inside of the string. So we can just access that by its property name. I don't need to include everything else that we matched with our regular expression. So using these type of matching groups is really useful, especially if you want to pick out bits of data from a particular string. So that's a possible solution for exercise four. Let's take a look at the final exercise, which is exercise five. So exercise five has a larger portion of text and we're basically being asked to find the number of contractions that are used inside of the string. So a contraction is something where the word has been abbreviated. So here we've got haven't instead of have not. And here we've got I'd instead of I would. So we basically want to get a count of the number of contractions that are used. So using our string, we'll use a matching function again. And we're going to match the literal apostrophe character, which in this instance has been represented by a single quote. And then we're going to match some letters that would form part of the contraction, like D, S, T, or M. So for the examples that we looked at, I haven't would be matched here. So we've got the single quote, and then we've got the letter T, which we've matched here. And with I'd, we'd obviously match the apostrophe here. And then the D is matched inside of the character class. So there are other contractions that we should look out for as well. So we can optionally say with the pipe symbol. So then we'll look out for the apostrophe again. 
and then we'll look out for either an R, for example, for your. We might also want to look out for a VE as well for you've. So let's put another OR pipe in there and then check for a V. So this character class will look out for RE or VE. And you can see it comes back with five contractions. And of course, we could always access the length of the array that's returned to give us that number exactly. And there probably are some other contractions that we should put inside of our regular expression, but you can see the idea of how you can build up an optional match within your patterns by using the OR operator. All you need to know is that that pipe operator will make the character class to the left or the character class to the right an optional part of the pattern. So that's the solution for exercise 5 that you could use. And that brings us to the end of these regex exercises. So hopefully you found some useful tips to using regexes with your JavaScript functions. And next time you need to match something in a string within your JavaScript code, you can think of using a pattern via a regex rather than trying to manually manipulate the string using some other functions. So that's it for this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. And I'll see you next time.